Oop, let's move that a little bit. Okay, hi. <laughs> um, I'm live and what am I doing? I don't have my laptop, so I'm gonna have to do comments off the screen. I've got lots of perfumes to sniff. Let me just have a look and see. I think we've got some comments already. Oh yes, we've got Alicia. Hello Alicia. I just quickly let you know that I was doing this. Lizzie Bean, LB, Lily Bet, as I just called, as I just called you. Uh, and you've got your whiskey, yes. <laughs> hey Claire. And we've got M. Um, right, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get too hot, I think, in this top. I'm gonna open this door. Do you know what? I'm I'm not I'm not hot until I start live streaming. And then I get all clammy. So I don't know what I think it's the excitement. It's the excitement. Right, let's get right, okay. Full disclosure. I think I've had three drinks and it might be four. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not wasted, but um I'm mildly oiled, mildly oiled. I've had my WD-40, so, um, but <laughs> I'm gonna try and be a good girl. Bloody adverts, you got adverts. Oh, they're a pain, aren't they? Oh, hello, I wondered where you went to. And yellow's back. Um, <laughs> right, so what are we doing today? We are doing some samples that I've been sent very, very kindly. Uh, I'll start with Alicia. So Alicia got in touch, she knows how much I love Ilang Ilang Nosy Bee and she knew that I was running out. So uh, she very kindly sold me for a ridiculously low price, a full bottle, well, or, yeah, I think pretty much full 100 ml of Ilang Ilang Nosy Bee as well as a 50 ml of Vani de Tahiti, which I also love. And the Vani de Tahiti. I did have a fair amount left and just by serendipity my mum was here yesterday when we unboxed them and she really loved the Vanita Tahiti and it's her birthday this month so uh, you can tell what happened. Mum now has Vanita Tahiti. She wore it yesterday. We went to the cinema. She smelled amazing and she said afterwards I could smell that all the way through the cinema because it's such a nice uh, projecting fragrance not beast mode but it just it just rises up and it smells amazing so she's really happy she's got Ilang Nosy B no she's got Vani de Tahiti and I've got a hundred mil massive bottle of Ilang so thank you Alicia but Alicia also sent me a load of samples so I've got those here as well and I've got some samples that Lizzie Bean sent me that arrived today and amongst it all we've got the Cherry Oud from Galan, we've got some Clive Christians, we've got a BDK, um, God, I don't even know, we've got, oh, and I've also got, these free samples are from Vietnam, Vietnam, if anyone knows how to pronounce it, uh, it's a French brand, it's one of those resurrected French brands, so Vietnam, it's like good friends, I think it would translate to, one of those resurrected brands that was big in the um, 1930s, 1940s, and then that uh, the owner, the chemist um, chap died, the brand died, and then it got resurrected very, very recently, in the last few years. But they're really nice, so I've tried them all, and they are really nice. So um, we'll talk about those very briefly as well. And uh, just see. Uh, at least you missed the beginning of the adverts. Gutted. <laughs> Holly's here. Hello, everybody from the coast of Maine. Lovely. Very nice. Um, John says it's chuffing cold up up north. Um, right. So yeah. Okay. Well, I think what we'll do because I know Alicia is not a late bird, so we will start with Alicia's. And um, might not do all of Alicia's. Might do some of Alicia's because there's quite a few. Some of Alicia's, and then we'll do some of Lizzie Betts. So, shall we start with the Clive Christian? Um, yeah, let's see that, right? So, here, here we go. It's Clive Christian, and we've got two fragrances, I think. 
could be wrong. Rock Rose and Cosmos Flower. Now I did look on their website quite recently. Oh yeah, 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 there we go. And they have some funny, these names are okay. Some of their fragrance names are ridiculous. And I was just saying to Lizzie actually in a chat, some of their fragrance names, they're really tacky for a brand that prices themselves so high and sits on the sixth floor of Harrods. Um, and I did try, I remember Clive Christian sent me a couple of samples because I applied for free samples online. I think they emailed or something. Um, not for not for review or anything, just as a consumer, not that I am a consumer, but I, I, can't, I must have signed up to free samples on on some kind of online forum. And, um, and I wasn't that impressed with the ones that they sent me. So anyway, let's see, <laughs> let's see. I don't wanna be prejudiced, but I think when a brand is so expensive, when they market themselves as the most expensive perfume brand in the world, you are almost setting yourself up for being highly criticized. Like we expect the very best, don't we? Don't we? But we, unless we know what this bullshit is all about. Uh, uh, John says, my experience of Clive Christian so far, I'd say it's the same as Creed. I did like one, but for 350 pounds, whatever, I'd rather buy one carrot for Christmas dinner. Uh, Claire says you could probably get a parsnip for that as well. Yeah, I know, I know shopping has gone up a lot, but you could definitely get more than one carrot and one parsnip for 350 quid. Although, who knows, next week could be different. <laughs> so let's go with, what's this one? Uh, Noble Cosmos Flower. Noble Cosmos Flower. I don't know the notes. I have absolutely no flipping clue what to expect. John says, there goes my Clive Christian sponsorship, damn it. I am pleasantly surprised at the moment. I've got a sweet, spicy opening here. Oh, I like this. I have no clue what this is. So, <laughs> so far, <laughs> so far, this is way better than I expected. Very peppery. It's reminding me of Almond James Byzance. That's what it's reminding me of, but really peppery. Oh my God, it's a pepper bomb, but it's also really floral and sweet. I actually really quite like this. I hope no nasties start to show up. But Claire says, I think Clive Christian makes men's underwear too. If you could get free, if they rule you out. <laughs> I think she's saying John could be a sponsor for the underwear. <laughs> and um, uh, M says, I agree if you call yourself high priced luxury, don't be tacky, and I'm looking at Roger too. Right, so what do I get here? I definitely would say the closest comparison I've got is Almond James Byzance, but with a ton of pepper. And I would say it's white pepper. So it's not like pink pepper, it's not black pepper. It's literally that pre-ground on, you know, on a, on a, in a cheap cafe, the pre-ground stuff where you, when you, tip it out, it fluffs into the air like powdered, powdered pepper. Powdered pepper, a little bit of a white floral bouquet, nothing too sharp, nothing too heady, but it definitely feels like white florals. And sweetness and a slight fruity hint. So actually, then, there might be an underlying aroma chemical that I don't like, but I'm not sure. So far, it's actually really nice. I don't think we've got any, uh, I mean, uh, deep sensuality of the cosmos flower. What the hell is a cosmos flower? Is it a real thing or is it imagined? Does anyone know? 
whatever it, whatever it is, it's peppery. It's really peppery. But I like pepper. Um, and it's nice, actually. So I'm eating my words because I was a little bit... I wasn't expecting a lot. Let's try the other one. It's, I think this one's called Rock Rose. So we've got a clue. We've got a clue there as to what to expect. Oh, drop some things. Right, Rock Rose. Cosmos is a flowering garden plant. So it's a real thing. Okay, thank you, Em. Uh, so at least you've not even sprayed these. Rock Rose. Smells like an aquatic. I was not expecting that. So Rock Rose, I'm getting um, a fresh aquatic feel. Um, not too salty, but a little bit of a blue fragrance, a bit Bleu de Chanel. Yeah. Um, a little bit sweet, very designery, very mass market aquatic designer. It smells nice, like if someone wore this around me, I'd say you smell really good and it smells like a men's designer aquatic but not too harsh, but still. John says, I'll wait for the Ikea fragrance. You know, it's, it's maybe it's somewhere between Bleu de Chanel and Pacific Rock Moss in a very vague way. You know, I, I can't remember. I haven't smelt Pacific Rock Moss for a long time, but yeah, it's aquatic. It's a little bit sweet. I'd say there's a little spice in here, but it's very smooth. Something, what's the sweetness here? I don't know, but it's um, it's a little bit generic, I've got to be honest. It's generic, um, it's like a high-end version of a generic men's aquatic. It is a bit cool, actually it's more cool water than Bleu de Chanel, if I'm honest with you. But I like cool water. But it is a bit of cool water. It's got that um, fresh ozonic feel. Not expect. I wasn't expecting that for a fragrance called Rock Rose. I think I was expecting um, a heavy, dark Gothic rose. Maybe based on the packaging, we've got black, gold, and then uh, the red on the front. So I, I think I was expecting some sort of Gothic rose. I was expecting it to be sweet and rich. I've smelt stuff like this before. I can smell some herbs, like um, something aromatic, a little along the, I don't know if it would be like a clary sage, something like that. So some green herbs, some aquatic notes, a little bit of, a rich sweetness under there but not too not too sweet yeah I've smelt this before in a in a roundabout way in a men's designer so I'm not that impressed although it does smell quite nicely done uh, I'm much more preferring it's just taste it's just about taste much pro more preferring the cosmos and the cosmos has developed the pepperiness is dying away. Really pretty florals coming through, but sweet, like sugared florals. They're not mega, mega, mega sweet, but quite sweet. Something like a, um, a little bit of a frangipani or something. Um, definitely white floral, but very sweet. Honeyed white floral. A floral that gives off a slightly honeyed feel. I actually quite like that. I kind of want to try it on skin. It's still got a bit of pepper, but it's really died down. That pepper was strong in the opening. The Cosmos flower, I actually really like. Oh, hello, Angela. And the other one is a very pleasant men's designer generic fragrance. So that is the Clive Christians put those down there i will be coming back to the cosmos flower because i, I really quite like that uh, and i'm surprised 
John says, I don't think rich people like interesting fragrances, it seems. I think we've had this discussion before about luxury brands. I don't think luxury brands necessarily cater to us frag heads. I think they cater to a mass market, but then they, they cater to a mass market that just has a much bigger budget. So they don't necessarily make a more interesting fragrance than any designer brands do, but they just whack the price up massively and put them in fancy bottles and make people feel that they're getting a luxury product. That's what I think. Um, right, that, that's, uh, we'll carry on with Elysia samples. I've got a few here and I've got Pure Distance and Anotos, I think I have smelt, I think I did smell most of Pure Distance's stuff. Although I don't know if I ever smelt this one. So I, I yeah, I have no idea if I've smelt this before. It's, I don't know how to say it, A-E-N-O-T-U-S, Anotos, Anotos. I think this is a masculine one from memory. Just a little bit on there. Yeah, that's um, very masculine. Smells like leather and green stuff all at once. Um, yeah, I'd say it definitely would appeal to uh, the masculine. Uh, Victor says, hi Claire, unfortunately Clive Christian was acquired by Niche Box in 2019. I really like their original collection for men, uh, number one, 1872, and X, but now they've all gone through reformulations, so, okay. Yeah, Anotos is a very interesting men's, uh, I say men, sorry. I know not everyone does gender and stuff, but this would be marketed to men if it was in a designer bottle, and it's definitely not my kind of thing. It's not very sweet. It smells like moss, dark green leaves, leather, maybe polished wood. Lots of depth, really deep. Something a little lively, something almost like a violet leaf or something like that. Definitely green though. Green, deep polished wood, that's what I'm really seeing. Mahogany, I'm seeing a mahogany, dark polished wood, shiny AF. I honestly don't know what's in here, but it does smell interesting, different, classy. I know Pure Distance are ridiculously priced as well. And whilst it's not my thing, I can see, um, I can see a lot of guys really liking this. It's a deep, mysterious autumn, winter kind of green. Not, it's not, it's not all green. It's green and woody in equal measure, I think. And maybe some sort of incense or a little hint of smoke. I need to not spend too long. Yeah, a little, I like a little incense smoke. Very interesting fragrance, not my style, but um, I think it's definitely interesting. So let's carry on. Next one we've got Bel Fiore. Oh Man Luxury, so I have no idea. I don't know if I've ever tried this brand and I don't know anything about Bel Fiore. So Fiore, I think it means fire. Bel, it's only B-E-L. So does that mean it's like a two words merged together like beautiful fire? <laughs> Love the little lamp on your table, either it's little or your glass is huge. Uh, it is quite little, there's my hand, so it's quite small, it's actually my bedside lamp, but I bought it down. Gift from my mum a long time ago, my mum really loves pretty glass, Tiffany style lamps, that sort of thing. 
and I think she bought them for me when I was in a house share going back maybe 20 years or so. The glass is fairly big to be fair. Glass is, glass is almost as big as the lamp. Belle Fiore, oh man luxury. Sweet as a lot of sweet stuff. Sickly sweet. What am I getting here? It smells red. Sickly sweet, fruity, vanilla, like red hard candies that have been sucked so they're all sticky. Yeah, it's actually quite nice um, if you like sweet stuff. Very fruity, sweety, sticky, sugary, full on gourmand. I was not expecting that. Belle Fiore, I, I was thinking it's gonna be smoky, fiery because of the word Fiore. Maybe someone can correct me. Maybe it doesn't mean fire. Um, but that is one word, B-E-L-F-I-O-R-E. -E. But it's, um, it's like strawberry, hard sweets, hard candies, and they're all sticky and uh, yeah, they've been sucked. Yes, that's it, Claire, F-I-O-R-E. It's, but with the word B-E-L, with B-E-L in front of it, but yeah. Yeah, it's reminding me of, of some particular sweets. Fruity sweets, anyway. Oh, Fiore might mean flower, she's, Claire says. Do I get flowers? I just get sweets. Beautiful flower. Yeah, I mean, it's not, um, is it gonna focus? So it's all together, all one word, Belle Fiore, uh, but whether that means beautiful flowers. Yeah, I guess it could be floral, um, but it smells like sweets, fruity sweets. It's calming down, it's getting fresher and not so sticky sweet. It's actually really nice. I think gourmand lovers, fruity lovers, you're gonna enjoy it. It's nice. I don't know what they charge, I have no clue. But if it's not mega expensive, it's, it's quite nice. Quite nice. I would say that it would be the sort of thing that would get you compliments from people, or, or people would go, oh, someone's got some sweets. <laughs> Who's got the sweets? Uh, flower or field, M says. Uh, Oh, Christy's here. Hey, Christy. Oh, Valentina's here as well. Hey, Valentina. I blind tested Belle Fiore last year, I think. Let's see what you think. Yeah. Yeah, mostly I get fruity sweets. Maybe there's a hint of flower in there, but for me it's... And a bit of spice, like a slight, a, a, a cinnamon or something red. Something red and spicy, yeah. So, very nice actually. Um, this one's called Monarch and it's from Bodicea the Victorious Monarch. Uh, let's, let's try it. I don't know if I've ever tried anything from this brand. I've never felt the need to, if I'm honest with you. I think they're, they're a brand who can be extremely expensive, but when they go on sale, they can go really cheap. And I always feel a bit suspicious about that. Let me know if you feel the same. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, no, it's all right. I've smelt stuff like this before. Um, it smells a bit eucalyptus-like, so um, menthol-ated, incense, petrichor, I don't know, I feel like niche companies have been doing stuff like this for quite a few years. There's nothing new here. I feel like I've smelt this before quite a few times. It's not bad. Might 
get better. Maybe there'll be some interesting nuances that come out, but for now, it's just one of those menthylated eucalyptus like incense type fragrances. Perfectly palatable, but nothing exciting. So I'm just going to move straight on to the next one. Uh, we've got a dabber here, Bois Diris. Is that the Van Cleef? Bois Diris, that's the Van Cleef one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Bois d'Argent is the Dior one, and then Bois Diris, am I right? No, Bois d'Argent is the... Bois d'Argent is the Van Cleef. So I don't know if I've tried this. Bois, who's Bois Diris? Who did Bois Diris? I feel like I know it. I feel like I probably have tried it. Uh, but I have no clue. So it's Bois d'Argent. No. Who did Bois d'Argent? Oh my god, I don't know. I'm going to put it on my... I'm going to put it on my hand. There's some in the lid, so... I'll pop that there. Um, so Bois d'Argent was Dior. Yep, John says Bois d'Argent. So this is Bois d'Iris. This is the Van Cleef. <laughs> which um yes i mean it's, it those two bois d'iris and bois d'argent often were compared to each other and uh, i always remember greggy boy years ago saying if you like bois d'argent just get bois d'iris it's cheaper and they're not much different and i have to agree there's not a lot in it it's a really nice, it's got a metallic, both of them have a metallic feel to them. And a, an underlying sweetness, like a woody, more of a woody, but slightly vanillic woody undertone. A lovely, um, kind of like soil-like powderiness, not exactly powder, more like soil. But definitely a metallic thing, but quite sweet, reasonably sweet. Not as sweet as fruity floral sweet, but I'd say it's an ambery type scent. But very, very nice. Very, very nice. I do like, I've always enjoyed Bois d'Argent and Bois d'Iris, although I forgot about who made who. Who made who? So another one then here from Alicia is called Terra, T-E-R-R-A, and it's an extract from a company called Divina Terra, made in Tuscany. Hopefully I'm getting this right. It's called Divina. So the fragrance is called Divina or Divina, and the company's called Terra. And it's Italian, from Tuscany. And we will spray it and see what we think. I haven't heard of this brand at all, so this is interesting. That's quite pleasant. Okay. Um, Oh, hey, Scott. Lovely to see you. Okay, this is quite smoky. Sweet and smoky. This is really nice. I feel like I have smelt something like this before. But then, my God, <laughs> once you've been doing this a few years, it's very hard to find anything that you haven't smelt something similar to before. This is very smoky, but not too dark smoky because it's quite, what am I smelling? I feel like I'm smelling maybe a guyac wood. So it's a smoky wood with a good sweet under belly, possibly patchouli. It's almost got, it's got what, you know what's in, you might not. What's in T-Rex? Iannula. What's in Tyrannosaurus Rex from Zoologist? 
is it Cade? It's got something in here that's in T-Rex that gives it, it really helps with that smoky thing. It's definitely got something in common with T-Rex, but this is not T-Rex crazy. Quite fiery, smoky. It could be the Cipriol. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not brilliant at some of these ingredients. Cipriol, Cade, they're not my, because they're not my thing and I've never smelt them on their own, I just have to guess. I know that Cade is in T-Rex and Cipriol probably is as well. So it could be. It's something smoky, a little bit green. But it has this sweetness that's like um, a little vanillic. It is ambery. It's an amber accord, but the main player at the moment is smoky, smoky and green. Yeah, it could be Cade and Cipriol or one or the other, but it's very smoky. If you know the smoky, smokiness of T-Rex, it's very similar, but it's not as intense. Hey Antonio, nice to see you. Cipriol is dank dark green, isn't it, says John. I'm not 100% sure on these on these notes because of, as I say, they're not my thing anyway. So I don't see them that often, in, certainly not in my fragrances, in my fragrances that I love. They only ever come up when I'm testing random stuff like, like here. But yeah, there's, there's quite a sweet, it feels like an amber accord with a little hint of patchouli in there at the same time then this smoky greenness on top. Lizzie says, I smelt Cade in something once, I think in one of Angelos's fragrances, dark, green, deeply smoky. Yeah, it could be that. It could be Cade, could be Cipriol, could, as I say, it could be both. Hey, Tiki girl. Either way, it's a very interesting fragrance. It's, it's that combination of a, of a smoky, note that's quite intense that's really going to be polarizing with a sweet ambery richness underneath so i do think that that is quite a unique perfume if that sounds like your kind of thing it, and i don't get any nasty dry scratchy aroma chemicals <laughs> how many times do i have to say it i feel like i now let me know if what you think but i because i have become so sensitive to certain aroma chemicals i feel like it's my duty to always mention them do you agree or disagree whether i should do that or is it getting boring do i need to shut up about it okay well i've got one more from Elysia, and i have to admit i did smell this one earlier i just sprayed it into the sample pot pot you know what i mean it's called lease Solarberg and it's from Maison Crivelli. Lee Solarberg. Um, I have to, oh, there's two in here actually. I forgot about that. <laughs> there's two. So we'll go for the Lee Solarberg and then we'll come back to the other one. Um, Elise says, Yes, it's helpful being tipped off about the aroma chemicals. Thank you. Okay, good to know. Em says, Please keep doing it. I'm also averse to scratchy screeches. <laughs> okay. Um, John says, personally, I never pick up on them, so it's useful to know what I may need to avoid. Uh, Claire says, you should mention what's important to you, so if that includes, so that includes aroma chemicals. Okay, sometimes I feel like a broken record, and I wonder if it's annoying to watch. Um, Lizzie says, I think I've become far more sensitive to aroma chemicals. It's good to know what you're smelling, so that we know when we're being overcharged for 100% naturals. And Christy says, I appreciate when you mention Abroxin or any of those. It's so disappointing to purchase something and that's all you smell. Yeah, I think once you are a little sensitive to those aroma chemicals, to those particular aroma chemicals, you can't help but, but they, you can't help it, but they overtake everything. And it may not be the case for everyone, but to those people that are sensitive to it, they have trouble smelling anything else in the composition because they overwhelm the noses so thank you it's good to know i will carry on moaning about aroma chemicals so 
I sprayed this in here, but I'm going to refresh on to here because this is uh, funny we're talking about Roman chemicals <laughs> because I, I might change my mind now, but let's see. When I first sprayed it into the box earlier, that was all I could smell were the Roma chemicals. It's a bit better now spraying it onto the paper. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Lee Solarberg. Um, Lise will mean Lily. Solarberg, who knows? It's like maybe it's like an iceberg made of sun instead of ice. <laughs> who knows? But it, it is kind of like a solar fragrance, actually. Uh, I don't know, though. It doesn't smell. For a fragrance with the word lease, which I'm pretty sure means lily, it doesn't smell like a really green, sharp lily scent. I don't think I'd guess lily if I smelt it. But I am now getting those scratchy aroma chemicals. It's quite a dry scratchiness coming through. I couldn't tell you what's what. I don't think it's Amber Max. It might be more of Am Ambroxin or, or Ambroxin's brothers and sisters. There's a lot of, of very slightly similar uh, aroma chemicals out there. This is, um, feels like it's quite reliant on those. Well, there is a sweetness here. No, it's very aromachemically. There's some nice bits here. There's definitely some nice stuff in here, but it's it's like a spiciness, like a little bit cinnamon-like, but lemon, it's like lemon, cinnamon, some sort of yellow floral, very very fluffy a little bit sugary all of that part is nice but then you've got baccarat rouge style woody ambery aroma chemicals i couldn't tell you what they are they're not bad but this almost feels like it's taken some inspiration from Baccarat Rouge. It doesn't smell like Baccarat Rouge, but it smells like it's got some of those sweet, something of that sweet aroma chemical amber base. Like, if I smelt this on someone and walk past me, I, I'd say they're wearing a niche fragrance, a modern niche fragrance, and they smell good but I probably couldn't tolerate wearing that perfume myself. I don't know if that's any, if that's any good, if that's any help to anyone, but, um, I'm just having a look at your comments. <laughs> John says the most natural smelling thing I've ever smelled is Nova. <laughs> and he's joking. And M says, I must be odd. Sometimes I'm anosmic and sometimes they overwhelm me. I can't smell Baccarat Rouge 540 on my skin at all. But yeah, I smell it on others and I think it has some broxen. And uh, Li Lilibet says, uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 definitely has that effect. And yes, it's some broxen. A few others lurking. Yeah, for sure. Do I like Hedione, says Christy. Yes, I do. I, I think Hedione is really nice. I've got some and um, yeah so Hedione is like a, a much lighter ethereal jasmine that's supposed to almost have an effect of what do they call it like pheromones or attraction it's in Eau Sauvage not Sauvage but Eau Sauvage the original Eau Sauvage uh, in quite a high dose like famous it's famous for its Hedione and yeah, I really like Hedione. So I'm not averse to aroma chemicals. I really am not. It's just those particular ones that are scratchy, dry, woody, they make me thirsty. So because of that, 
I have to drink. Yeah, I don't hate this Maison Crivelli, but it's not something I personally could wear. But if people say that they really like it, I would understand. <laughs> I will forgive them. <laughs> so the other sample that was hiding in the box is B O T Batani Batani Citrus Verve. So Batani, I think must be the brand and the fragrance is called Citrus Verve. I haven't heard of this at all. Here we are. So let's see what we get. M says, how do you get hold of these aroma chemicals? Can you buy them online? I bought quite a few back when Hermitage oils were still based in the UK you can buy from Hermitage now but they're in I think they're in Italy I could be wrong but they're in Europe somewhere and of course that means that the shipping costs have gone up and they have a minute or they last time I looked they have a minimum order and obviously because I'm not a professional I'm not buying huge amounts so but yeah I bought Hedione um some an ISOE super type thing uh, what else did I have? I bought lots, I bought some vanillas, so I, I think I've got a natural vanilla, but it's called Oleo Vanilla or something like that. Anyway, yeah, I bought quite a few things um, and it was really good to be able to smell things like Hedione in isolation and play around with them to make really terrible attempts at fragrances. Hey Gabby, nice to see you. Uh, and Don as well. Hey Don. Uh, Alicia says, I think Hedione's the main thing in Initio Magnetic 7. Haven't tried that. I think I am not interested in Initio after the few that I've smelt. They're just not for me. They're very, they're a bit heavy on the aroma chemicals. I liked their, the natural, the musk one, musk therapy, was it? It was really lovely opening. But the dry down was a bit dry and woody, but not in an aroma chemical kind of way, just a bit like, just better to me, it smelled like. I know it was supposed to be sandalwood, but it was very dry and boring to me. Um, and, uh, Gabby is stuffing herself with camembert watching. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, they're closed for four months, uh, Hermitage. Uh, I didn't know that. Thank you, Valentina. Right, what are we doing? This this one is a verve something I just said. Verve. Citrus verve. And this smells extremely natural. It smells like grass. It smells like green grass, wet green grass, lemon. It smells like, it smells like nature, wet green grass, lemon, a little bit of hay, lavender maybe. It smells like lots of essential oils, but not in a clumsy way. It smells like a perfume, but it smells very, very natural. It wouldn't surprise me if it's all natural. I know nothing about it, but yeah, it's very lavendery actually. Lavender, lemon, probably other citruses. Not too green. I said green grass, but I wouldn't say it's particularly green and it's not particularly bitter, like like neroli or, or you know, very, very lavendery actually. Lavender, lavender heaven for those that love lavender. It's getting more and more lavendery. It's like lavender's taking over. Yeah, very natural smelling. Scott says, I'm warming up with a mug of Maltese hot chocolate. What's everyone drinking tonight? Well, I've got vodka and Diet Coke. Cheers, Scott. Clink. What's everyone else drinking? 
Claire's got peppermint tea, lovely. Yeah, uh, almost like a lemongrass feel in here as well. Quite sharp lemon, lemongrass with lavender. Bit sharp for me maybe, Bit too, it's too heavy on the lavender for me. But it smells very, very natural. So that's an interesting one. So I think we've done all of Alicia's. Let's move on to Lizzie Beams. So. We've got them in here. Let's see, what should we start with? We're going to start with Mill et une, et une Rose. Is this Lancome? Mill et une Rose. So it means a thousand and one roses. Is it Lancome, Lizzie? I, don't, I remember, I think Karen talked about this one. Did Karen talk about this one? I think it's Lancome. Mille une rose. Okay, so surprise, surprise, it's rosy as anything. It's rosy, but it's a bit sharp. So does that mean there's geranium in here or some citrus? Something making it quite sharp. Lots of rose, probably be nicer on skin. I have a feeling skin might round it up. I might put it on my skin. And sometimes, sometimes, there's something on there. What did I put on my hand? Oh, the um, Bois Diaries. This side's clean. So, Mil et une rose. 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 Uh, we'll see if that's less sharp on my hand because that's a bit sharp. John's got tea, good old tea. Good old builder's brew, I hope it's not weak, says M. Uh, Gabby's got some Calvados, very nice. Is that, is that brandy Calvados? It's like posh brandy, isn't it? I'd say it's improved on the skin. So I know that Lily loves Stella and I'm almost getting something Stella-esque about this rose like it's so damn rosy that it is a bit like Stella but it's not completely like Stella it's not as nice as Stella uh, Lizzie we are on uh, Millet Un Rose is that Lancome yes I get um like a greenness to it like it's full on rose, but it's um, it's got a bit of greenness mixed in with it. I do prefer Stella. Stella's more full. I don't know. I guess Stella is that lovely rich rose. Nothing really interrupts the rose. Where there's something bitter and green in here. Um, Liz says, yes, Stella, I thought the same, it's that amber base. Yeah, there's, there's part of the fragrance that makes me think of Stella, but I would never say it's a, 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 an alternative to Stella. But it's just, in part, reminds me of Stella. But this has got like a bit of greenness to it that I'm not loving. It's very rich and strong. Not rich as in sweet, but it's very voluptuous, isn't it? It's big, it's a big fragrance. Christy says, must brown dinner's ready. Y'all come over. Oh yeah, lovely, what, what are we eating, Christy? Millennium Rose is very fruity on the top, there's pear, okay. I hadn't picked it up, but maybe gre yeah, green fruits, I can see. 
Uh, yeah, I, I think I prefer my fruits a bit sweeter. Like this isn't that sweet. It's a little bit bitter for me. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. No, I'm not, not sure. I'm not loving that. I don't hate it, but it's just got this bitterness that I'm not enjoying. Uh, Christy has ginger, chicken salad and cheese bread. Wow, that sounds amazing. Uh, Lizzie says I wanted more of the rose in there. I feel like it's got a lot of rose in it. But it is a little bit interfered with by this green bitter note. And it's a bit sharp. Like there's like someone squeezed a lemon over it or maybe like there's geranium in there which generally pierces things a little bit uh yeah so not loving it but i can understand if people do love it it's just not quite my style would jasmine then from bdk so bdk i've never found anything i particularly like from them um, I do think they are, I think what I've tried has been a little heavy on those aroma chemicals or, or not necessarily always those particular aroma chemicals, but rather the fragrances just don't smell natural. Like they just don't smell like they're made out of things that come from nature. Um, right. So John's got a sample of this that Lizzie sent him. So yeah, we're gonna spray it together and we'll see if we'll see what we both say. Be interesting. <laughs> okay, it smells a bit tobacco like oh a sweet tobacco. What's it called? BDK, what did you say it was? Um wood jasmine. Alright. Um I get a sickly, spicy tobacco, very rich, oh yeah, boozy, John says boozy cherry, sharp fizz, yeah, yes, I get that, I'm thinking boozy cherry but mahogany wood at the same time, dark wood, a cabinet, an old dark wood cabinet that's had booze in it booze has been kept in it for donkey's years and booze has been spilt in it yeah it's um what is it is it rum is it whiskey i'd say it's like it's a spicy sort of brandy but woody dark wood booze stained wood there's no way i'd ever wear this <laughs> i tell you what though it reminds me of uh the one from gallagher the um rose all day but it's like a more intense yeah it's really spicy i would say this smells quite a lot like rose all day but they've just intensified the booziness of it and it's a bit like stewed, stewed fruits. Is it apple? Or not rhubarb? Maybe rhubarb. It's like a stewed fruit. This fruit's been stewed for so long. It's almost lost, lost its identity. <laughs> stewed fruits, the sort of stewed fruits that you would cook up with spices and then you add some booze, a good slug of booze to it. And, you, and then you kind of like burn it a little bit. It's quite a smoky, burnt, spicy, rich, boozy fragrance. Um, good night, Claire. Ah, oh, Lizzie says that. Tobacco, interesting. I got an apple and booze like cider. Yeah, um, like your uh, parfum de Mali that you like. And angels share, but massively more intense. Um, night, M. J. 
John says like a brandy made by an American wine company. Gabby says, let's face it, when you've tried brands like Francesca Bianchi, Papillon, Tion, or April Aromatics, it's hard to top. So let's smell Angel Nova. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the thing. Um, you from from that point of view, from my point of view, from Gabby's point of view, we've been spoiled, our noses have been spoiled by these immense independent brands that aren't making fragrances to try to sell. They're making them from an artistic and love point of view and you, you you're never going to top that especially if there's talent there which obviously there is in those cases M says I struggled with wood jasmine I got sweet sticky dark fruits like prunes no wood no jasmine yeah I can't see the jasmine this is intensely spicy boozy rich yeah I really I just don't like that stewed fruit smell like no I don't like that it's too much it's way too much for me <laughs> so I think there's no way I could ever wear that it would drive me mental but saying that it's just not my taste I don't think it's bad and I was expecting to just get a, a shit ton of Amber Max and Brooks and blah -de blah -de blah but no to be fair it's not that it's it's filled up with crap it's just that it's too rich they're just not my notes they're too rich for me they just overwhelm me <laughs> but it's not a bad perfume if you like a really rich boozy um, fruity type scent then you may well like it but no not for me <laughs> John says Lizzie Bet it's not it's not awful I don't think I have any nose hairs left though yeah I totally agree um, and John says yeah there's a dry maybe tobacco like thing now Lizzie says I get a mothball thing. <laughs> right then, let's move on. Should we do Cherry Oud from Galan? Shall we? Let's have a little drink first. My throat's dry now. It was really, really smoky and smoky, boozy, spicy. So that, again, that kind of like dries. I've never really been a fan of anything that dries me out. It makes me feel dry, like dry, thirsty. And um, yeah, that does. Cherry Oud. I have some thoughts. Ah, uh, oh, so John doesn't have Cherry Oud to smell along with. Ah, oh, shame. Okay. Well, um, here we go. So I am. Um, not expecting great things here and I love Golan but I felt when they released the three Oods I felt like they were jumping on a train that left the station two years ago it felt a bit novelty it felt a little bit uh, cheap and so I wasn't expecting much <laughs> I smelt the cherry and actually the cherry on its own was quite pleasant not necessarily whatever the price tag is pleasant but still quite pleasant but when you smell it up close I get leather um, leather and cherry and they don't work together not certainly not now not at this very um, immediate uh, opening note point I don't smell, I don't think I smell real oud, although there might be a little bit in there. But I think I smell more of a leather. I would say this is leather oud. Leather oud? No, this is cherry leather. Queer, queer cerise. We're renaming this queer cerise. It's very leathery. Leather and cherries. Hey JC, nice to see you. Uh, Emma says, I do like Grease Charnel though. <laughs> John says, good luck Claire, my thoughts are with you. Um, Lizzie says it was a nuclear bomb on me. It's so medicinal. 
I just smell a leather note. I smell a very strong leather, like a harsh leather. More leather than cherry now. A little bit of cherry, but the leather's overtaking it, of course. And I can see what you say, medicinal. I would not, I don't want that on my skin. <laughs> I'm not doing it, Liz. I'm not. No, it's never with a little bit of, uh, it's just, is it, inno is it innocuous? It's, it's, what's the right word? Paradox? I don't know. The two facets do not belong together. It's a fucking travesty. That's what it is. It's a fucking travesty. You don't put a sweet, pretty, cherry, che cheap synthetic cherry with a heavy, dark leather. It doesn't make any sense. It's blowing my mind. I mean, they're starting to meld together, but the leather's pretty much the main thing here. Like, what the hell is this? Yeah, Lizzie says, agreed, it clashes. Juxtaposition, great word. That's probably what, <laughs> that's probably better than fucking travesty. <laughs> Gabby says, that's it, Claire, don't hold back. <laughs> they do start to meld together, but it's still, it's still a fucking travesty, let's be fair. Like, what the hell is going on at Galan? What is going on there? Because this is, there's nothing classy about this. It's, there's, there's nothing Galan about this. There's nothing Galan about this. It's like, a little bit like Le Petit Robe Noir, the fruitiness of Le Petit Robe Noir, mixed with the leather of a really harsh leather, <laughs> really harsh leather fragrance. No, no. Jumping on the cherry train. Yeah, they're jumping on. They, they probably thought, oh, we'll do Oud because that's really popular. Oh, and cherry's trending now as well. Look, we'll put cherry and oud together and we'll sell bucket loads. And maybe they will to a certain audience, the luxury audience, the Clive Christian, the Roger Duff audience. Maybe they will, but this, this is bullshit. So yeah, thank you so much, Lizzie, for allowing me to try it. I knew I wasn't going to be impressed. I didn't know what to expect in terms of how it was going to smell because oud and cherry, like who who's ever put that together? There's a reason why those two notes have never been put together before and let's hope that they never are again. Uh, so the next one's called Baby Cat and it's from Yves Saint Laurent and I was I honestly really wanted to try this one so I can't believe you sent it to me. Thank you, Lizzie. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I tell you... I think I'll probably like it and I was expecting, I'll tell you what I'm expecting from it, I'm expecting something a little bit like um, Whispers in the Library which I think is a beautiful fragrance which Lizzie got me onto, I actually ended up selling it only because it was, ended up feeling a bit rich and I never reached for it and I, I, I only seem to wear florals these days. So I ended up selling it, but I still think Whispers in the Library is beautiful, an amazing fragrance. And I'm expecting something along those lines. And it's Dominic Ropion. And Dominic Ropion, in my opinion, is a genius. I think he makes amazing perfumes. And talking of baby cat, I actually call Aniela baby cat. It's a very childish term. And I don't know why YSL have chosen baby cat as a name for their fragrance. Because it's like, a, I use it ironically, like, I know that I'm 45 years old, but I still like to go, oh, baby cat. <laughs> oh, there's a baby cat. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of excited about this because, because it's Dominic Rampion. And I do think I'm going to like it, but I don't know. Because I only wear lighter fragrances these days, I might not necessarily feel this need to, to own it. But I do 
think it's going to be a nice sort of sweet amber of some description. Uh, it's darker than whispers, says Liz. Uh, right, okay. Gabby says, okay, I'm waiting for the baby cat reaction. I hate the name though. Right, I, I'm starting to wonder if there's something that I don't know here. A reason why I might hate it. D Dominic, don't let me down. Mr. Opion. Monsieur Opion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I smell it in the air. Okay, it reminds me of... Is it... What one is it? Um, it's nice. It reminds me of... It might be Aura Sublime from Bijon, uh, which was a Celine, C Cecile Zarekia famous and very, very nice Amberly fragrance. It's quite sweet, but it is a cupcake vanilla frosting sweet, which I knew, I knew it wouldn't be. Dominic was never going to do that to me. I'm such a dick, aren't I? Yes. Um, this is really nice. It's not quite whispers in the library, so it's not exactly what I thought. It's nothing that unique in the niche realm, but it's a very nice multi-layered resins, vanillas, spices maybe, slight, a slight woodsiness. It reminds me of what is it? Is it? There's a Dior, I think. Definitely not unique, but a gorgeous combination of all the good stuff. Yes, I agree with that, Lizzie. It's reminding me of a... Is it a little bit like the... Um, actually, it's a little bit like Bois d'Argent. So funny, we were... And uh, this is obviously Bois d'Iris. They're not the same, but it's in the same ballpark, I think. Uh, John says it's may me then, but I get a slight rag bar vibe too. It's pleasant enough though. Um, no, I don't get that at all. Um, I'm very vocal about how much I hate rag bar Latafa. Man, no, do you know what actually, John? I stand corrected. No, I get what you're saying. But the thing I hate about Ragbar Latafa is that fake oud note mixing with that sweet ambery thing. I kind of know what you're saying, but I don't get, there's no fake, it's not the fake oud side of it. It's more the sweeter resin ambery side of Ragbar Latafa, if anything. I kind of know what you're saying. I get benzoin, a massive dose of benzoin here. It's really nice. I like benzoin. I'm a big fan of benzoin. <laughs> it's reminding me of, um, so benzoin, uh, a really great example of benzoin is Bois d'Armini from Guerlain. And it's making me think of that a little bit. It's not quite as smooth, not quite as vanillic as Bois d'Armini. But yeah, and I do get a faint um, something whispers in the library-ish from it as well. A hint of smokiness, but not anything like the smokiness I got from that other fragrance, which was green and intense and like fire, like smoke from a fire. It's this gentle, subtle whispers from incense and it's not dry. It's not making me, my throat dry. Hey, Hilary, Hills is here. Uh, Hilary says, hey y'all, Claire, you look stunning as always. Oh, thank you, Heels. What are we smelling today? I've got baby cat here. This is a sample that Lizzie sent me. And it's very pleasant. I think I get some tonka as well. Tonka, vanilla, all the different resins. Woods, a little bit woodsy, but in a very soft way. And whispers of incense. It's very, very pleasant. So yeah, that's the best one so far, I think. Really nice. That's sort of, that's like universally appealing 
Most people are going to love that. <laughs> Claire loved cherry oud, says, says Liz. Uh, I think you can probably guess that Liz might be being a little, a little bit sarcastic. So that's baby cat. Have we got anything left? I think we've got one left. Uh, oh, Shalimar Tonka. Ooh, exciting. I'm so excited about this one. I'm not expecting to love this because a strong Tonka is too much for me. Again, um, anything too rich can just, I can appreciate it, but I don't necessarily want to wear it. And I'm expecting that with this, but I still really wanted to test it. So I do appreciate Lizzie sending it to me. So it's new Shalimar. Do you know what? Someone on eBay is reselling a bottle that they've used for twice the retail price already. So these um, limited editions, they do get bought up and resold quite quickly. So Shalimar Melissine Tonka. quite what I expected. I think I expected something richer and darker to start with. It does smell Shalimar-ish and I'm not a big expert on Shalimar. I never owned the original. I've had some flankers. Yeah, it's um, It's got a cherry feel to it, a little hint of cherry, which I guess is coming from the Tonka. And it's not anything like cherry oud. It's not a real cherry, like an, an, an on-purpose cherry note, but it's like a slight cherry nuance to something. It's actually really nice, but it's also giving me polished wood. Um, like, uh, furniture polish. I actually think I'm getting cherry per furniture polish from it, but in a good way. <laughs> I have, I, I don't know if I'm recognising this from, I did have the vanilla one and then I got rid of it, so I probably should have kept hold of it. So I could compare, but I had a declutter. But I do get a furniture polish feel from this. Does anyone else get that? Am I, is this sacrilege? Um, uh, Hilary says, your ring is pretty too. Wow, I feel frumpy today. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Hilly. Thank you, Hilly, Hilary. Um, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I just chucked it on. I've got no makeup on. Hair's not washed today. <laughs> I've got no bra on. Prove it. No knickers either. Uh, shit. Hang on. Can we just rewind and delete that bit? Um, I've got um, tracksuit bottoms or you know, they're velvet indoor trousers. <laughs> so really, Hillary, um, I'm no more glamorous than you. I just chucked on uh, two rings. That's all. <laughs> I'm on the truth check. <laughs> oh. Yeah, even this top, this top under this, I've got a hole in it. I've got to throw it away, really. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully everyone feels a little bit better about their own personal appearance now because they're overrated, says Em. <laughs> they so are. So if, if they go up your bum, it can get painful. Yeah, this is getting more intense as it develops. <laughs> And it, it really is giving me, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's giving me furniture polish. It's a little, uh, it's a bit harsh, if I'm honest with you, and I wasn't expecting that. I think it's that bergamot. So Shalimar, the original Shalimar has, is famous for a, quite a harsh bergamot that smells quite lemony. Um, and I get that from this. 
I do remember that from the original Shalimar. That bergamot, and I had the filtra, and the filtra de parfum I think was quite intense with this lemony bergamot for a, for a short part of the opening. And I do get that from this, and I think that's what's given me furniture polish um, visions. Is that, yeah, that lemony bergamot that's really quite harsh. I have a feeling with that being a, um, a citrus, that's not going to hang around too long. And then it will probably, and particularly on skin, it's going to get a lot better. Uh, Gabby says, you won't catch me with a fong. I wear directories like Mrs. Slocum. Uh, Lizzie says, it doesn't go harsh on me. If anything, it's too quiet. We need to swap skin. Actually, it sounds a little bit too silent to the lab. Do you know what? It's not on skin, is it? So let's find some skin. I did keep my skin clean. Uh, where is it? What did I do with it? Shalimar Tonka. We'll put it on my skin because the skin, skin can round things out, I think. Let me know. Do you agree? I know, obviously, we all know skin is generally better. It's a better canvas than paper for perfume, usually. Not always. Sometimes things are better on paper. Um, but sometimes if things are too harsh or flat, one-dimensional, anything with musk and iris, generally you have to put it on skin. So we will let this settle a little. Uh, Lizzie says, I think paper can bounce the brighter elements out. Yeah. Yeah, so I still get that harshness, that lemony harshness that is typical with Shalimar. Shalimar's famous for it, and I get it. But I do think it's more, it is rounded out a little bit on the skin so it's not as i don't think if i'd have sprayed this directly on skin i don't think i'd have said furniture polish like i did when i smelt it on the paper yeah so i'll let that settle for a minute i've got i think i've got some more stuff to sniff yes i do um i have got these Oh dear, I'm making a right mess here. I've got these Bien, Bien Ame, Bien Ame, Bien Ame, Bien Aim, Bien Aim, Bien Aim samples. I, I bought these from someone in a Facebook group. They're not full samples. In fact, one of them I've emptied. Um, let's start with the empty one. Je heureux, je heureux. So like, I think that means days and hours, days, hours. This one only had a little bit left in it and I, I've put it on my skin twice just to sniff it. And it is, it's empty now. They're not lovely little samples, Je Arras. And this one, this brand is the one I was talking about right at the beginning. And it's a brand that were mothballed, I think is the term. So it's a brand that started up in 1930s, I think, and the owner, perfumer, chemist, uh, when he died, the brand died with him, and then it got revived just a couple of years ago. And sometimes when brands are revived, companies can do a nice job. Whoever buys it or restarts it can do a lovely job. Sometimes uh, the brand that buys it or the company that buys it can shit all over the history and not give a damn about ingredients and stuff. Anyway, in this case, I think that the company has done a really nice job uh, of reviving this brand because the perfumes smell very classic, really nice. They are all in the same, there's only three, they're all in the same ballpark of creamy, iris makeup powdery type scent so they are if you know tent de neige from villa renzi they're 
all kind of like that but they're all different they're different but they're all like that your skin but better masks and iris and powder and and all of that um so je, je that one there i had that on my hand yesterday and it smelled in the opening like there was some heliotrope it smelled so it smelled a little almondy floral irisy musky um I would say I didn't love the opening and I went to the cinema with my mum and as I was sitting in the cinema and it's been on my skin for over an hour I was sniffing it and I was like oh wow it smells amazing so once that heliotrope actually dries off and um, the musk's irisy stuff comes through it's really beautiful and it lasted really really well on my skin so I really enjoyed that one Je Heureuse or however you say that but to be I honestly don't know if I can tell you the difference between all of these they are different they are all slightly different but they all have very common theme of smelling like your skin with lotion and powder on and, and that sort of thing none of those scratchy aroma chemicals it wouldn't surprise me if they are using materials that were available back in the day the company was first around because there's nothing there's nothing like isoe super and, and broxen or anything i don't get any of that and if you read their website they're trying to use as many naturals as possible um they, they've got some really great philosophies on sustainability their bottles are refillable bottles are beautiful they've got this um gold shell lid and um price wise not too bad i think they're about 140 euros for the bottle and then you can buy a 100 ml refill for about 95 euros and they smell really like they smell like caron uh but the more softer skin scent type caron rather than anything like really harsh or peppery or you know like aldehydic nothing like that they're they're they smell vintage but in a soft boudoir kind of way. Uh, oh hello Katty, Katty's here. Uh, okay, right. Um, yeah, so I probably couldn't differentiate between these three different perfumes because they're all kind of like irisy, violet, um, but they are different. So Le, uh, Le Vie en Fleur, Le Vie en Fleur, I did have this one on my wrist today. I've got no skin. I've got no skin. Um, Le Vie en Fleur. I will put that there and these are the, the kind of fragrances you absolutely have to put on your skin as I was just saying certain things really have to go on skin and these are those you know the iris iris and musk things very light and um, delicate very delicate fragrances these are I really like them I would totally I'd love to have one of these. So this one's a creamy body lotion. Um, iris. Tent and age territory. Yes, very much creamy body lotion, thick, creamy musky body lotion possibly a hint of oh it's called la vie en fleur but the flowers are very delicate so there's no like sharp i wouldn't say it's, it's white florals if anything it's more like rose and violet kind of very soft creamy clean vintage hollywood glamour makeup and powder um, let's go for the other one then. Now I remember this is called Vermeil. It's called Vermeil. 
and this one is much more irisy, almost woody. Um, so not so creamy body lotion like. But they're all lovely, they all go through their own development. This is very irisy. Mm. This is a dry iris. So it's not like, um, it's always, yeah, dry woody kind of iris, like a really, really soft, powdered, clean woods, like powder, wood powder, iris. No obvious floral iris. When I say iris, iris to me is not a floral. Iris comes from the root of the plant and to me it doesn't smell like a flower. Yeah, they're, they're really, really good. Highly recommend. You can get, uh, the free samples are 20 euros directly from the site. So I don't know what the postage is because I got these from, from second hand from someone in the UK. So if the postage isn't too bad, I really, re and you like that vintage soft. There's one from, oh, what's that brand? I'm gonna forget now. It's called, it's an Iris Rose fragrance. So it's um, an old brand, another old brand. I've forgotten who that, what they're called now, but it's in in the same ballpark as that. E, e Coudre, E Coudre. I think it's called Iris Rose, Rose Iris, something like that. So it's very old fashioned, very soft, very delicate, uh, gentle, glamour powdery, muted, but not weak. They're not watered down, they're not weak, but they are that subtle, um, slightly old fashioned, but not in a sharp way, not in a screechy way, not in a Chanel number no. five way at all. Really, really nice. This, this is my kind of thing. I really love these kind of perfumes. So I really appreciate those. Um, yeah, ethereal. Yes, Lizzie, that's that's definitely the right word. Um, Gabby says I'm having an iris kick. I think I'm beginning to love iris. Every everyone's got to fall in love with iris in the end. It gets us all, I reckon. Catch my whiff. Hey, good to see you. It's been a long time. Uh, hi, Claire. Hope you're doing well. Um, Lizzie says, Claire is the queen of Iris. She needs to do a guide on everything Iris out there. A beginner's guide and an advanced guide too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would enjoy that. Um, I'd say out of all of these three, that last one, Vermeil, is the most Iris heavy. Like it's Iris front and centre. It's actually reminds me a bit of La Tessa from Mask Milano, so if you like that, and that's, uh, but La Tessa does dry down a little bit icy super, it's just a bit aroma chemically in the dry down, a little bit dry, <coughs> need a drink kind of thing, and uh, this one doesn't. So in that respect, could say it's better than La Tessa, and La Tessa is rated very highly for an iris perfume. Mm. Uh, Gabby says, Claire, please do an iris video uh, as an iris guide. I did do an iris video, but it was quite a while ago, so maybe it's time. It's time for another one. Because mm, I have got some good iris examples now. I have got, I've got iris, I've got a miniature of iris poudre from Frederick Mal, and I've got the Serge of iris with the extra s's at the end. So I have got some, some of the, some examples of what are considered the best irises out there. Um, I still haven't got, there's one, uh, which one is it? Obviously I haven't got iris the Jacques Faf one, um, but there's another one. Oh, Iris Silver Mist from Serge Luton is highly rated Iris. I've never tried that. But yeah, if you like La Tessa, you're gonna like Verme, I, I believe, from Bien, um, Bien, Aime, Bien Aime, I think they're called. 
Um, Lizzie says, I love Dior Homme and Diorama, which are kind of similar to me, Fizzy Iris. Um, yeah, what I've got, I've got down there, I really love Dior Homme, no, Dior Homme Parfum, if I can reach it. That Amber and Iris together in the same place with a slightly sweet woodsiness. And allegedly has rose. <laughs> I don't get the rose. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could find the rose in here. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So this is Mr. Smelly's bottle. And I'm just hoping he doesn't remember that I've got it. I want to keep it. Uh, yeah, that's to your home. Really knows what to do with Iris. To your home knows what to do with Iris. To your home, do Iris good. No, not to your home. Do your home. Oh my god. Um, Catch my whiff says I'm wearing Cartier Declaration d'un soir intense today. Love the rose in this. Very nice. That that line, the Declaration line, is really really good. Another like woody. Woody, and I don't think they've all got rose, have they? But they're all good. The declaration from Cartier are all good. Hide the bottle, say it was stolen. I'll, uh, I'll, get a, I'll see if I can generate a crime report for a burglary. <laughs> right, I think I am done. I think we've done all the samples. Oh, should we go, quickly go back to the Tonka? Where's the Tonka? Oh, what's that? That's the rose. All right, okay, no. Yeah, that's the rose, Mille Un Rose. It's fruitier now. It's lost that green bitter tone that I didn't like, but it is sharp, like, is it geranium? I'm not sure, it's something a bit sharp about the rose one. Hey, Kareem. Uh, Lizzie says, which brand would you say showcases the best iris? Well, Francesca Bianchi pretty much puts a heavy dose of iris in everything. So definitely she does it really well. And I think she uses the real stuff. When Tion uses it, she uses it to perfection. Um, her irises perfume does dry down to a sheep row with quite a lot of oak moss. So I don't love the dry down, but the opening and mid have a really beautiful, soft, plush iris, as does her Ekaterina. But I find the jasmine slightly sharp in Ekaterina. But the iris is like the softest pair of ballet shoes in the world. <laughs> so her iris, Tian's iris is beautiful. Um, Obviously, the iris in here, as you know, is amazing from Papillon. Love that. I love that, um, that it's there from the start, mixing in with those gorgeous florals. So, um, yeah, Lizzie says, I think the iris in Papillon has me addicted. Catch My Whiff says, I never liked geranium when I was a kid. In fact, it made me choke. I like it a bit now. I yeah, just find it very, very sharp. Where's the Tonka gone? Where did I put the Tonka? Oh, that's good. That, so that's for my... Um, something sweet there. But that's not it. <laughs> there it is. I found the Tonka. So Tonka Millicene off of Shalimar. Yeah, it's got uh, a slightly smoky leather feel now. Sweet though. Almost chocolatey. Dark. Very sexy actually. So it definitely has um, calmed down that harsh bergamot note, that lemony furniture polishy thing. It was all rounded out. And I get a slightly smoky, almost like burnt toffee. 
it's really nice like it's not quite my thing because as I say I, I tend to just wear light stuff these days but this is really nice it's like burnt toffee slightly leathery not too sweet though like it's not too rich it's not too sweet it's not as heavy on the tonka as I thought it might be I was thinking of that Bean by And perfumes that was really, really tonka heavy and it was just too much. I still get a very slight cherry nuance to it, only not in the full inhalation, but as I'm inhaling for a split second, something slightly cherry like. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice, really nice. Uh, Lizzie says, I need to get more from Francesca Bianchi. Uh, Karine says, there are, uh, oh, where you got there are many TRMP I want to try. Carty says, the day I finally tried to own, I'll throw a party. You, it is worth throwing a party for, to be fair. Gabby says, I'm getting my Tion Rhymeful order in a few days, finally. <gasps> Exciting! Is that the one with Polynesia in it? Which, what ones are you getting now, Gabby? Uh, Lucy says, yeah, the Shalimar does shift a bit. Hey, Francis. Yeah, the Shalimar does remind me of stuff. It probably reminds me of, fil of Shalimar Filtra's Parfum. It does definitely smell Shalimar. I think some people are saying it doesn't smell anything like Shalimar. I disagree. It smells like Shalimar to me. I think it's yeah, I think it's quite sexy. Karine says that Shalimar is really good and for a fair price compared to the La Amatio price tag now. Yeah, Karine, I would say there's no reason why you would pay more or less for Shalimar Tonka versus any of the La Amatio. There's no real clear difference in quality or anything that's detectable to my nose anyway. Uh, Gabby's getting Polynesia and The Board. Okay, I haven't tried The Board. That one sounds interesting. Polynesia is amazing. Michael says, hello there, sweet Claire. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well, thank you, Michael. Starting to get a bit tired, so I'm probably going to say goodbye in a second. How are you doing? Uh, Catch My Wish says, Shalimar smells like a powder bomb on my skin. The original Shalimar, okay. I'd say this smells a bit powdery too. Very, very finely milled powder, very, very fine. Let's do a really, really quick summary then. Um, so of everything, Shalimar Tonka, I think is definitely quality. It's good. It definitely does remind me of the original Shalimar to some degree. And I think it's up there. It's it's one of the best I've smelt tonight. Cherry Oud can fuck off. It's absolute rubbish. And I think Galan need their head sorting out when it comes to that. Uh, the... Lise Soloberg is a little from Maison Crivelli. It's a little bit too synthetic, but it definitely had some redeeming features in a powdery yellow sweet kind of way. But it did have a bit of a baccarat rouge kind of vibe, bit synthetic, woody aroma chemically for my liking. So I wouldn't get too excited about that. Uh, the uh, Diviner Terra. Really interesting, smoky green, sitting on top of a sweet ambery accord. Interesting, worth your attention if it sounds like it might interest you. It's not quite for me, but it, there's nothing I would complain about. All of the BNAME, BNAME are really nice if you like classic vintage, non aroma chemically smelling. Subtle, not weak, but 
gentle, delicate, classy, sophisticated, soft scents, your skin but better, very gentle florals, absolutely love all of them. And then we've got Belle Fiore was uh, from Oman Luxury, to me it's not like fruity sweets, so if you like sickly sweet, um, sticky red sweets, smells like that. Pure Distance Anotus, Anotus, classy, gentle, manly, dark woods green, not for me for sure, but definitely got my respect. Uh, Mille et un rose. I don't know where you are. <laughs> there you are. Uh, sharp, pink, red, fruity rose. Just a bit bitter for me. Something bitter in there, something sharp that I'm not enjoying, but lots of rose. <laughs> Very rosy, but um, not quite for me. I've got more. Uh, uh, Dior, the Bois Diaries from Van Cleef and Arpels. Smelt it before. Um, I do like it. It's a little bit metallic, maybe. It's my only criticism. But I do think it's a nice vanillic, um, slight, yeah, sort of like amber, amber iris. But it's a bit sweet. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't excite me. But it's you know it's been out a long time. Done that one. Monarch from Joe. Uh, Lucia the Victorious. This was the one that smelt. I've mixed all the, I've mixed all the papers up, so I'm just going from memory. This is the one that smelt like so many other niche perfumes out there. Um, Eucalyptusy, incensey, just not not that interesting. Uh, the least Soderberg we've done, and then it was just the Clyde Christians. So the one that I like, so Rock Rose smelt like a men's designer, but done really well, cool water-esque, slightly sweet fragrance, fine. Um, the one I liked was Cosmos, Noble Cosmos. Let's see if I've got any skin left. Yeah, okay, I've got a little bit of skin here. Noble Cosmos flower. Um, Spicy, really peppery to start with. Smells like sweet uh, tropical island flowers, white, maybe yellow flowers, sweet, probably a bit fruity, very, very peppery. Then the pepper died down and it became more floral. Definitely really sweet, though. There's an additional sweetness here. Like, um, I don't know, like a powdery custard or something. I don't know. But I do like that. I think that's nice. Might be a bit synthetically sweet, considering it's a Clive Christian. But it's very pleasant. Um, uh, catch my whiff. Catch my whiff. You are Andrew, aren't you? You are Andrew, off of off of um, odor cupcakes. It's been so long since I've seen you, my head's not 100% certain. Um, it says, early on in my fragrance journey, I really loved the metallic smell and bought many of the chrome frags. I barely wear them now, the nose is always changing. Yes, it definitely is. Claire, if you had to wear Nova or Cherry Oud, which one? I'd probably wear Cherry Oud. I think that's slightly more tolerable. No, Nova was horrendous. Like Nova was really horrendous. <laughs> uh, catch my riffs, says Claire. You're going to have to mark your arm up like a side of beef to keep the sense straight. Carty says Claire Christian is bizarre. I love Cosmos flower, but not for the price. Oh, it's Matt. Sorry, sorry. It's only because you've got that. Um, Emo not emoji, you know what I mean, avatar. And I think I'm confusing you with Andrew 
because he had the, the a similar avatar from um damn it what's that cartoon uh joanna says hi claire looking forward to watching this properly tomorrow bed so hi joanna yeah i probably should go to bed myself yeah so uh i do think that clive christian has got some aroma chemical base in it that i'm not really feeling it's starting to come through on my skin it doesn't smell expensive I mean, it's clive christian they charge i don't fucking know but they charge a lot they are famous for saying they're the most expensive perfume in the world and seriously they don't smell like that to me um it's nice but it could be jimmy choo do you know what i mean like it it's not that special it doesn't smell like there's any particularly natural great smelling ingredients in here yeah it could be a hundred percent synthetic it really could I, I really don't pick up on anything special here um yeah peanuts yeah um charlie brown <laughs> yes it's only because andrew had this, i'm sure andrew you know I, I haven't seen andrew around for a long time andrew used to do videos with Del delicious delights arlene and um i'm sure he had an avatar of uh, someone from peanuts Anyhow, that's why I'm getting confused. But I, but catch my whiff, Matt. I haven't seen you around for a long, long time as well. I uh, hope you're doing well, by the way. Um, uh, and he says, I'm going to bed in a cloud of anything that smells good. Love going to bed in a cloud of anything that smells good. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I think I've summed everything up <laughs> as best I can. And what am I going to wear to bed? I'll tell you what I'm going to wear to bed. Now that I have my 100ml bottle and I've pretty much emptied out my 50ml, thank you to Alicia again, I now can douse myself in Ylang Ylang Nosy Bee, a beautiful, rich Ylang and vanilla that I love. Okay, uh, Carty says, good night. Oh, nice to chat. Nice, Carty. Uh, Lizzie says, great life, Claire. Thanks for sharing samples with us all. Thank you. Thank you for sending them to me. It's been a, so much fun to try them. John says, thank Claire for a good sniff session. Thanks for coming along, John. Um, uh, Catch My Wish says, pandemic and Frank Com drama pushed me away for a while. I'm slowly getting back to it. Oh, it's lovely to see you back. And thank you everyone so much for joining me. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.